awak. Belum eh? Motor bag kurang. Hi everybody. Oh, I should be um. Uh, okay, so we are now live on Facebook. Uh, please share. Uh, we are, so we are doing our episode ten today. Uh, of our uh season two podcast lah. So what are we talking about uh, today, Nicole? <laughs> today is talking something further after last week. Yes. Podcast. Yes. Also about something wider to property. Um, okay, let me just turn on my phone for uh, the live stream as well. Hi, hi, hello, everybody. Uh, so what are yeah, audience who are now live on Facebook as well. Channel, uh, please share this session uh, out as well. Yeah, hi, hi, Ryoko. <laughs> Hi, good evening. Hi, everyone. So this is the first uh, episode uh, uh, coming back to life. Lah, huh? Yeah, since now that we have um time on uh, Sunday evening. Hi, good evening, everyone. Please like, share and subscribe to our channel, to our Facebook, our Instagram, um, our YouTube channel as well. We are waiting for, uh, let's take uh, another three minutes uh, for the audience to come in. Uh, so as usual, we have three segments uh, in uh, the podcast, in this podcast. Uh, today onwards, these three segments uh, will be uh, mostly, uh, huh? it will be streamed live uh, unless we have um, guests uh, from 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 a different time zone, uh, like what we have actually last last two uh, episode, right? Uh, from yep. different very different time zone, then we might um get uh, you know, pre record our session as well. Yeah. Okay, so we have three segments. Uh, the first segment is called almost anything. Uh, where the ghost, uh, I mean, sorry, the host. <laughs> I was thinking, I was actually thinking the guest and the host. <laughs> I kind of connected it, the ghost. <laughs> yes. So the first, the first segment is almost anything where we talk about almost anything. Okay, among the host. Uh, and then the second segment is called breaking broadcast. Uh, where we invite guests. Uh, expert, you no know, industry leaders to share their wisdom and thoughts with us, and also uh, the third segment is called Clubhouse Chaos. I uh, will be playing fun um, activities to engage with uh, the audience as well. Huh? Hi, hi everybody. Hello. Hello. Um, hi Jenny. Hi Iwan. Hi Ming Kang. Ming Kang. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, please like and share. Yes. Okay, another minute before we start uh, today's. <laughs> right. Hello, hello. And we have, so this session now, we have also um audience who are live in our Zoom session because we are streaming from Zoom. Uh, we have also, uh, I know, uh, audience from Facebook Live as well, right? Yes. Okay, another minute. Okay, please like, share, and subscribe. Right, uh, it's now 8.35, okay, uh, let's start our podcast session for today. All right.
Good evening, everybody. Hi. All right, you are listening to Property Podcast Season 2, Episode 10. Uh, the Message in a Bottle Property Podcast Series is brought to you by Property App, a property all-in-one app where dreams come home. We're sending out messages of hope to inspire others to do the same, to make a difference in people's life, and to create change. Hi, everybody. My name is Vivian Chong. Hi, I'm Nicole Ng. This is segment one, Almost Anything, is where we talk about almost anything. Last week, we have talked about the sub-sales for the property market. Now, come to this week. What are we going to talk about? Yes, Nicole. I, uh, today, uh, we are going to expand our market insight a little bit. I think this is the first episode that we are doing that. Lah, huh? We are going to talk about uh, the overview uh, of global property market. Hmm. Global property market, yeah. This is something mm. we need to know more about. Yeah. So, Nicole, looking back at um, 2020, you know, according to this uh, Singapore PwC, la, it was reported that 2020 has seen a steep decline uh, in year-on-year -year transaction volumes. Uh. So, of course, this is partly due to the impact of border closures, law, preventing buyers from traveling, and also partly reflected that sellers are refusing to discount their asset prices. You no know, hoping, of course, that uh, the market will quickly, uh, quickly rebound now rebound. once those, yeah, once those um, vaccines are delivered. But yeah. however, um, based on last year's report, Singapore remains as the top investor preference uh, with um, Tokyo and Sydney featuring second and third respectively in, in their rankings. Wow, mm. looks like Singapore is still a highly preferred location yeah. for the investor to go into. Mm. On the other hand, in Australia, Despite a sequence of lockdowns in this year, the property prices have been largely unscathed. The property values keep rising in almost every market around the country and the capital cities are in line for strong growing of double digit for property price in this year. Yeah. And somewhere up north of Australia, okay, in Taiwan market, uh, their house prices are surging again, uh, affected mm. by a strong economy and, and um, ultra low interest rate environment. And mm. Taiwan's uh, Lutheran Home Price Index rose by 10.8% uh, during the year in the first, uh, first quarter of 2021. Uh, a sharp move improvement from the previous year's 2.7% uh, increase. And wow. the biggest year-on-year -year growth in seven years, actually. Mm. So mm. actually, Taipei is one of the most expensive cities in the world as well. Their house price-to-income ratio has risen sharply uh, from just 6.4 in 2004 to about 15.8 in 2020, which is actually higher than London, New York, Toronto, uh, Sydney, and Vancouver. Wow. Well, Hong Kong, Hong Kong is still the world's uh, least affordable market, of course, uh, with a score of 20.7. Wow, there's still a big gap, uh, 20.7 yes. compared with 15.8 yeah. in Taiwan. Mm -mm. Yeah, talking about Hong Kong, uh, this pandemic has caused the longest and deepest recession ever in history. Following this, Hong Kong economy has returned to growth in the first half of 2021. The mm -hmm. city's containment of the pandemic and the start of local vaccination uh, programs boosted overall market confidence and underpinned an improvement in leasing and investment momentum across the key commercial property sectors over the past six months. Mm -hmm. okay, looking forward, the bottoming out rents and anticipated economic recovery is going to support the investment demand and improve the capital value growth in the second half of 2021. Mm, looks like they're expecting a market rebound as well. Huh? Yeah. Mm, especially for the for their residential market. Uh, the capital values for the mass residential market have grown 3% in the first half of uh, 2021. And the rents uh, have bottomed out and rebounded slightly for the luxury residential uh, leasing market, uh, supported by the local demand, triggered by a switch to working from home that has uh, promoted, of course, uh, the uh, upgrading demand. Uh. Mm. Let's see. So we are actually on a general overview of the global property market. Yeah. Let's continue to segment two, the breaking broadcast, where we have our invited guest of the day to tell us more about it from a more detailed perspective. Yes. Hi, welcome. 
Welcome to segment two of our property podcast, Breaking Broadcast, uh, where we have our invited guests of the day to share with us about the topic of the day. So in this segment, uh, let's talk about the emerging trends in the property and real estate market. Uh, we want to hear it from our invited guests. Both are experts in the property market overseas. Yeah, we have two guests today, both mm. currently located in different countries. First of all, let me introduce our guest, Dion. Hello. Okay. Hi, Hi Dion. Dion. Hello, everyone. Dion is currently based in Hong Kong and working in the overseas real estate industry. Her major focus is in UK, mainland China, and Malaysia properties. Her unique insights in this industry are based on her in-depth study for the country's geography and economy. By getting insight of the country economy trend with a wide range of analysis, she could provide telemed solutions based on the customer need. All the rich resources that she has enable her to support for clients' different requirements, which includes the housing renting, property management, or even looking for the first or second hand of houses. Hi, Dion. It's good to have you here with us today. Hi, nice to meet you all, all of you. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Okay, yeah. yeah, this is my first time in uh, broadcast. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, everything we have the first time one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, and also, uh, let me introduce uh, another guest of ours today. Uh, uh, our another uh, invited guest uh, uh, is Kong Wai. Uh, so Kong Wai, he is an Australian based in Perth, uh, Western Australia for 30 years. Okay. Um, Kong Wai has previously, uh, he, he was previously a sales export manager in Fresh produce industry for almost 20 years, uh, shipping mainly Western Australian and Chinese carrots uh, internationally. Uh, and clients, uh, his clients clients includes in. NTUC, FairPrice, Tesco, uh, Giant, Cold Storage, Shop and Shave, uh, Welcome, Park and Shop. Um, he has then shifted to property sales in 2013 as uh, he's interested in property investment for wealth creation. And he preferred not to be traveling internationally, you know, constantly away from family. Lah. So he has sold over 100 million uh, Aussie dollar. Huh? So it's equivalent to the 300 uh, uh, plus million ringgit actually, huh, worth of properties so far. And he has also personally invested in properties for 20 years. Uh, so it's really good to have you here, Kong Wai. Actually, it's very hard to get Kong Wai here also. Huh? Because Kong Wai, I know you're currently on your holiday, right? So where are you now exactly? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, hello, everyone. Apologies uh, ahead. Uh, I'm in my pajamas. Uh, I didn't expect me to be <laughs> showing up. Actually, one. we cannot tell, the, so it's uh, fine. <laughs> 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 yeah, so I am uh, about 850 kilometers away north of Perth at the moment. Uh, I've been traveling since last Sunday uh, and we'll be traveling another few more days um, because it's school holidays at the moment. So we're spending a lot of quality time, quality time with uh, family. And the place that I'm in at the moment is called Monkey Mire. And that's Monkey. where we're chasing dolphins. <laughs> ah. There's no monkey oh. over here, apparently. <laughs> Just oh. dolphins. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I've been seeing a lot of your photos online, actually, <laughs> with your family. Uh. Yeah, family trip. Mm -hmm. So today, yeah, um, so that's where I am at the moment. Mm. That's good. So we have Dion. All right. So, um, based on uh, currently, uh, you are in Hong Kong and Gong Wai, who is uh, based in Australia. Mm. So, in segment one just now, we have talked about the current trend of the property market. It seems like everywhere is expecting the property market to rebound. Mm. So, even in Malaysia, based on the My Property Data Analysis in June this year, okay, it shows that the investor transaction had increased by 38% and 82% of the completed transactions happened in 2020. So we are looking forward to an upward trend in the property market soon. So what's happening in other countries now? Bion, would you like to share with us? Uh, okay. So and uh, let me to analyze uh, from this uh, two zero one nine until now. You uh, as you know because the Hong Kong social activity and the pandemic occurred in Hong Kong, mm. which is the actually is the several economic strike, especially the retail shop and the restaurant industry. Mm. 
these two the, the incident occur, uh, warehouse production demand drama, uh, dramatically decreased, cause a lot of the industry building demand drop and vacancy increase. Mm. So that's why the industry price dramatically drop, which over 50%. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. For example, like uh, Jim Sajay, mm -hmm. uh, this mm -hmm. very golden area, right? Yeah. So normally per month, they like uh, rent the one shop, actually need uh, over the 20,000 per month to rent mm -hmm. a shop. But due to uh, this uh, incident, maybe it's uh, just only pay the half price, also can rent a shop. So it's a, uh, we really drop over the 50%. Okay. Mm. So, yeah, again, the, during this hard time, a lot of the uh, entrepreneurs are forced to arrange the employee to work from home. Okay. Mm. To prevent this COVID 19 outbreak. Uh, therefore, the entrepreneurs also cut down unnecessary render fees and change to the smaller size uh, office uh, for sustainable, sustainable. So from that now, so that's why uh, uh, this year, uh, I mean, uh, since uh, 2020 until now, the whole model has been changed. Or it's like the internet demand suddenly become very hot. In mm. Mm. Uh, by the way, in terms of the uh, residential, Sure, mm. properties, yeah. Home property price just the uh, drop uh, slightly around 10 to 15 percent uh, for these two years. Oh. Okay, so mm. only the, this year, this year, uh, maybe the first quarter, much worse. I we I can see the demands for the new private properties has begun to rise again. Mm. So the Hong Kong properties, um, have dropped. yeah, yeah. So it's good. It, it, so now it's a rise is quite a steady. Uh, mm. during the period. So actually, the, this uh, proof the whole property are quite strong. The resin advertising, mm. ever city la. So means that mm. is that they can the uh, resist the uh, all the any uh, incident happen since mm. the COVID nineteen the our Hong Kong social activity. Mm. Yeah. Because it's double yeah. impact on, so, the, so, on the market. Mm. Yes, yes, correct. But uh, 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 for the residential, it's quite strong. Uh, I mean, the price still can, mm. can last. Uh, uh, not, not, not easy to drop uh, over like, like uh, 50%. But for the industry buildings, yes, it's, uh, it's almost uh, most of the, I think 50% is the vacancy. Oh. The industrial. So that's why mm. the price is dropped. Yeah, industrial oh. building. So the, mm. the, the impact is bigger la, for industrial, commercial yes. even? Commercial, mm. yes. Yes. All right. Mm. Mm. So, usually, mm. uh, usually is there a lot of uh, overhang uh, of the houses, uh, the residential houses, like before uh, pandemic? Mm. Uh, yes. Yes. A lot of them. Mm -mm. Mm. So only the this uh, social activity happens. So that means that actually the China uh, mainly China, uh, mainly people they won't come they won't come to Hong Kong anymore. They mm. just stop the dealing with dealing. I mean, the uh, dealing buy the property in Hong Kong. So that's why only uh, at this moment, I think the most is uh, Hong Kong people. To they still have the ability to buy the new private house, so so that the uh, the price is uh, slightly increased. Uh. It's not like last time. I mean, uh, since the uh, two zero zero three until mm. maybe two zero one nine before, the price is like the du double or triple per uh, double or triple percentage growing. The price is uh, oh. quite crazy. Mm. Mm. Uh, only now is a uh, uh, I, I think it's a uh, back to the normal. The price mm. is slightly only like that. Mm. Mm. Right. So actually, it means that uh, it's also a good time uh, for uh, for the uh, Hong Kong people, the Hongkies are uh, to mm. maybe start having a chance to get property on their own, right? Since it's so tough before this. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> 
Huh? Yeah. Uh, but uh, also, as you notice, know, uh, Hong Kong social activity, it was, uh, uh, I think, almost uh, 50, uh, 40, uh, 40,000 people uh, migrate to other country. Oh, mm, mm. Yeah. Mm, all right. So it means that uh, the property uh, for me inside uh, these coming years, the price might be dropped. At least a bit. Yeah. Mm. This, mm. this is my, my perspective. Mm, all right. Thank mm. you. Mm, what about the situation now in, in Australia, uh, Kong Wai? Hello. Yeah. Um, mm. It's very different. Um, at the start of the pandemic in February uh, 2020, mm. a lot of the large banks in Australia are predicting uh, the property to drop by maybe 20% uh, mm. for the year in 2020. Uh, but Australia is considered one of the luckier country that uh, didn't really get affected uh, seriously by COVID. Yeah. So mm -mm. by probably around three months later, um, by, by May, uh, most of the city has gone back to normal. So the city that I'm in is called Perth in Western Australia. Uh, uh, we're a bit ulu, a bit kampong. Mm -hmm. So not many people come in. So the chances of COVID spreading is a lot lesser. Ah. Uh, so we have been mostly living like normal. Uh, that's why you can see mm. us always holidaying, having yeah. support matches of 60,000 people. So nice. It's life <laughs> yeah. like, like normal over here. Mm. So and yeah, uh, <laughs> so effectively, effectively by the end of 2020, um, mm -hmm. apart from Melbourne, uh, that's the, obviously the most popular city in Australia for a lot of people, especially mm -hmm. for Malaysians. Mm -hmm. uh, Melbourne's the only one that has gone backwards. Uh, they've gone backwards by 1.7%. It's not a lot. It's one yeah. percent mm. um, while the rest has gone up. Uh, so, for example, Adelaide has come up by 5.6%. Uh, Perth has gone the other way. It's gone up by 1.7%. Mm. Uh, Brisbane has gone up by 3.2%. And Sydney has gone up by 2.5%. So, apart mm. from yes. Melbourne, that's constantly being affected by COVID, the rest has just gone, gone up. But that's mm. only the start. That's only the start. So, if mm. you look at now, in the last 12 months, Australian capital cities on average has gone up by 20.3%. Wow. So if you wow. invest that $1 million, you have made $200,000 mm -hmm. uh, just like that. Uh, yeah, it's, it's quite crazy. So uh, wow. it caught everyone by surprise. Um, so I think it's because it's a COVID safe environment. Mm, a lot of expats has came back from America and Europe initially, uh, and mm. they can afford to spend a lot of money. Uh, they're spending five million, ten million dollars, twenty million dollars uh, in purchasing properties, uh, and that has put a lot of pressure uh, in, in stock uh, because we haven't built up so fast to cater for the, for the demand. Oh. So residential wise, uh, it has changed quite a fair bit. Mm. Uh, co commercial wise, yes. Is, is affected quite quite significantly mm. like everywhere else. Uh, office is obviously the worst case uh, because yeah. um, everyone's, everyone's working from home. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> mm -mm. So, we are so all the, working from home. <laughs> then for Malaysia. Mm. Mm. For Perth, for Perth wise, um, the office vacancy rate is about 20%. One in five is vacant. So it's wow. quite bad mm. uh, in terms of uh, commercial vacancy. Uh, but it's improving. Uh, it's improving uh, quite significantly uh, because um, things seem to be getting back to normal uh, so significantly at the moment. Yeah, that's good. And actually, I think uh, it has uh, the pandemic has certainly you know um affected um everywhere like in the world like every country you know at least a little bit of uh. Uh, effect as well. Uh, and, and also, um, based on this uh, property advisors uh, analysis uh, of the late 1990s uh, during the Asian financial crisis and uh, Nipah virus outbreak, uh, uh, the transactions uh, did uh, also uh, drop drastically. And uh, a similar trend followed in 2002 during the SARS outbreak as well. So, however, in both instances, right, Malaysia uh, 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 us, uh, Malaysia, uh, um, we generally return to the market uh, in the following year after the crisis, which means now could be the time because this year we are you know, almost, almost done. Uh, we are expecting to, to be fully back, 
uh, vaccinated by you know by October, right? Um, yeah. So yeah, Fion and Kongwai, you know, based on your opinion, uh, what's uh, you know, what are we expecting to be happening in the property and real estate market post pandemic? You know, or, or moving forward, uh, what are the emerging trends in the future? Maybe Fion, you want to go first. Uh, okay, okay. Mm. So, uh, however, according to the trading economic global macro model and the analysis mm. uh, to, to show uh, mm. expectation for the post-pandemic at the Hong Kong housing price mm. intense is projecting the, the downturn trend. Okay, why, 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 why the, this reason? Okay, let me to tell you. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, at the moment, China and the Hong Kong government have jointly planned to control the housing price increase. No. So no longer the investor to spe uh, speculate on the mm. property's price. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Secondly, it's a predictable that the US stock market will fall sharply within mm. this uh, year. This also will be reflect the Hong Kong dollar will also fall follow with this uh, US dollar. Mm. 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 Nevertheless, it will let the property price decline also. It is this I foresee. Mm. Mm. Right. Thank you. Um, um, what, what about, you know, uh, is there any uh, difference uh, among uh, residential or uh, the commercial? Yeah, uh, so I, I say the residential property. Okay. So for the you see you see is the uh, industry buildings, usually this one uh, need time to recover. Not easy because uh, now it means that in Hong Kong, no more the warehouse production. So that uh, what can I mean? Uh, most of the people is uh, doing the uh, I mean the online shop. I mean the online mm. deal. Yeah. So that means uh, means that what. Uh, what can do on this uh, industrial building. So that's why it's uh, at this moment, it's still like, uh, it's a harsh time for them to know how to uh, uh, recover back mm. about this one for the mm. new building. Yeah, it okay. will take a while. Uh. It will uh, really it, take a while. Mm. Yeah, make everything changed uh, from, I mean, the mm. this model from yeah. uh, all change to internet. Mm. 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 To see. So that's why, even the people also no need to. I I, I need the office to work. Also no need. So yeah, they yeah. work from. Yeah, everywhere can can do. Mm. Yeah, this things. Uh, a, everything need to 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 change it back. I mean, uh, to change. Mm. Mm. I think the new norm that we are talking about uh, is is about you know the working working hours, working places. All these are the new norm. Not exactly uh, we are wearing face masks outside, not exactly that. I think the new norm is this, uh, these changes are almost, um, I think, going permanent already, right? Yes, mm. yes, mm. correct. Mm. So even like, uh, we, I mean, so even we want to have a meeting, we say, hey, no need to go out to, to face or we can use the Zoom to, for meeting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> right, we, are, right. we have already gotten used to that. You no, know? we know yeah. how convenient it is now. Yeah. Mm. And can can save, traffic save the travel, travel time. Traffic time. Right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Mm. So, um, Kongwai, are you here? <laughs> What do you think about this year? Yeah? It's going right here. Somewhere without traffic jam, huh? Uh, Kong, <laughs> I, I don't know about that. But <laughs> you, you know, Hong Kong, Hong Kong and Malaysia, we have something to agree on. Uh, mm. you know? Oh, the traffic jam is bad. Yes. No? yes. Yeah. Yeah. But <laughs> Australia is different. Uh? <laughs> okay, yeah. I think uh, because Kongwai also told me that uh, his connection might be uh, uh, a bit... Not stable. Uh, nah, yeah, a bit unstable. Okay. So... Ah oh, yeah, he's here. Yes. <laughs> he's looking uh, in Australia. Yeah. Well, what are the future um expectation or you no know, the emerging trends? We give him a little bit of time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was okay, right? The connection was quite quite good just now. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. It's okay. Shall we continue? Mm. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah, so this is how a live show is like. Lah. Yeah, the good and bad, lah, we were talking about the new norm. Uh, uh, but we don't mind now as long as the, the traffic is, uh, <laughs> is convenient <laughs> enough. So imagine when we are doing this live, as in live together in a, in a, in a place or at a place. We, we, we cannot be doing this uh, because Fionn is in Hong Kong. Yeah. And then, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> yeah, Conway mm -hmm. is in Australia. We can't exactly be doing this as well. So this is what live show, the challenge of um, going live, the challenge of the technology as well uh, yeah. that we still need to, need to do. Uh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We can't be doing this if, if the pandemic happened maybe 10 years ago, just 10 years ago. This, this will not happen actually. All these are yes. not ready yet. Yeah. Yeah. I we are, we are the, all, huh? I think the economy was right. Yeah, it, it will even it will be even worse. Worse. It's a really worse. Mm, mm, yeah. Definitely. So lucky. Yeah. I mean so lucky have this internet. We will all just uh, stay at home and do nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Literally <laughs> doing nothing. We, we doing can't nothing. Eat. Even no food to eat. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, at least now this is what we can do. La. Mm. Mm. Uh, yeah. Okay, never mind. We can get back to, do. yeah, let's uh, get back to uh, uh, yeah, our, our uh, session as well. Yeah, it's fine. Mm. Mm. All right. So looking into the prop tech, uh, there are many technology platforms um, have provided support to the property mm. industry over the years. For example, in Malaysia, we have an iProperty and Property Guru. Mm. While in global, we can see the platform like uh, Baker and Zillow. So uh, mm. can you share with us how do you think the technology can help in changing and shaping the trend? Mm. Mm. Okay. So I, I, can I share in the Hong Kong? Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. we, want, sure. we really want to know what's <laughs> happening uh, in Hong Kong. Yeah, any high technology. <laughs> No, actually, uh, previous, uh, previous time uh, in Hong Kong, they are using like something like uh, uh, 928 uh, apps. Uh, um, also, it's uh, some, some center line. Center line is, uh, I mean, it's the Hong Kong property, quite famous uh, uh, mm. in the real estate platform. platform. Yeah. Mm. Oh, uh, since uh, this year, I think it's the beginning of the uh, of the two zero two zero zero one. So mm. the center to change the model uh, So they they just like the everything to so all the uh, property they will take like the video to to record it first and then just uh, using like the three to view the property. Okay. But the uh, quite simple, uh, okay. You can view the property and then mm. view the, I mean the outside outside the uh, uh, view, and mm. then you can just uh, click the mm. link to direct to contact the agent. That's all. <laughs> this oh. one is the uh, consider it, mm. they have some the improvement uh, in, mm. in the home call. It's uh, actually quite the uh, same uh with Malaysia, right? Honiko. Mm. 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 It's, a, it's actually the same, yeah. So uh, mainly we are actually, as buyers, uh, we are actually, mm. as buyers and users, uh, we are contacting mm. the agents through the apps. Uh, yes, the yes. Mm. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Mm. Mm. Actually, so uh, only like the 360. Mm. See 360 view. view. Mm. The view is different. Mm. The VR view as well, right? Now, mm. are, they, are they also looking at the VR trend as well? Yes. Mm. Right. Mm. Mm. Yeah. How how does this actually um uh, support uh the industry? Uh, I, I would say uh, that means are you are you actually uh, uh as agents or, or or um um the industry actually depend on this platform? Mm. Do they depend heavily on the technology on the platform? Um. What kind mm. Yeah, I think so. for this, uh, like the center line, this apps, uh, uh, for me, it is considered it's quite simple. Uh, quite simple, just uh, 360 view only. Mm. I know from the uh, UK side, UK, they are using like the, uh, what's, what's called, uh, the apps, uh, suddenly I, can, I, can't re uh, I can't recall the, the name. 
the name. Okay. Name it's one. okay. Yeah, because uh, they have the uh, able to like okay for this area they can do the analysis. Of how many people have a uh, viewing the hmm. this, uh, area property? Uh, uh, right move, yeah, right move. Mm, right move. <laughs> Suddenly you <forgot. laughs> So that uh, yeah, they, they can uh, straight away to, to view that this property is uh, how many people is have the uh, access to view the this uh, property. Mm. Uh, and so they can do the analysis of whether the, this uh, uh, the demand is high or low. Oh. So very good. Uh. Mm. Means they have right. data. Uh. Mm. Data, yes, mm. yes. So, but in Hong Kong, no, no this uh, data. Mm. Yet. Mm. <laughs> Don't have yet. <laughs> mm. Maybe they hide the, this uh, database. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe they have it. Mm. They don't not, want to. It's just to, not for you. <laughs> yes. Mm, too mm, transparent about this. Life. Yeah. Mm. yeah, so information is definitely important uh, for, for all of us, uh, for the agents, uh, for us users, for users. as well. Yes. Mm. If you in your opinion, uh, uh, what what exactly can be improved on? Uh? Is there anything that you need from the technology, but you just can't get it yet? Okay, for example, like the data that, that you were saying just now. Huh? Mm. What else? Uh, in, in what uh, other areas that you think it should be improved on in this uh, 2021 or no, 21st century? Something that we should already have. Uh, okay. Mm. It's like um, we we hope like have the more party to get involved. Like uh, for example, um, for me, uh, sometimes I need the uh, uh, management party uh at here, mm. and then and then it's like the uh, the interior design or the some the repairing uh office. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, I need to get uh, all this uh, connection, but uh, ah. uh, like one by one to uh, find my friend uh, to mm -hmm. ask the agent uh, ask to around. get all this mm -hmm. information. It's mm -hmm. quite inconvenient for me. Uh. Mm -hmm. So I have the, this like uh, technology can uh, to link up together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. Yeah, I, I agree to that as well. Uh. In, I, I think in this uh, 21st century, this is what we should already have, you know, um, something by just one click and one swipe. So this information should be available to us. Yeah, exactly. Uh, actually, Kong Wai is back online. Hi, Kong Wai. Is everything okay? Hi. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, very, very... Very low place, so no problem. <laughs> no, no problem. We are just happy to see you. <laughs> uh, yeah, come on. We are talking about the technology, yeah. the current um technology that is um supporting this industry, uh, the property industry. Um, yeah. what what do you think actually? Uh, 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 in this era, uh, and is there anything lacking? I think I think uh, things have changed quite significantly. Um, mm -hmm. like what uh Fion said, you know, like three sixty part of videos and everything. Mm -hmm. Uh, we we have utilized that uh since two thousand uh, mid two thousand nineteen uh way way before uh, uh the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Uh, because it gives the uh, buyers a better engagement uh, of the property, whether they are based uh, two thousand miles away or we can see a property lifetime. Um, so what I like to see now uh, is um, something something that's uh, all encompassing the whole lot, you know, from from an app that not only just search for property, uh, provides uh, you access to all property related uh, uh, services, uh, like what uh, Fion has discussed as well, like a handyman, a, a solicitor, a mm. settlement agent, a finance broker, uh, uh, you know, a building inspection uh, gentleman as well or lady that can help you know a plumber electrician you know yeah. everything that relates to property uh, not only just to buy uh, to sell to rent to manage uh, and also a, a super app you know like you know if you click on app you know everyone's just hook on to mm. one app imagine an app like facebook but it's mm. all about property everything. you know mm. you, you use it for everything um yeah. so you can live uh instead of like face facetime uh, so you can use the app to show a client through instead of just using multiple apps, uh, changing around to show property through uh, customers. 
So mm. something like that from viewing the property uh, to contract preparation as well, an app to help with contract preparation to streamline wow. and save time and populate the information all mm. the way towards the settlement of the property and then if it's going to be owner occupied, it's okay. Then it's for investment. Then you have a property management taking over as well. So just one app to have the whole uh, services that you can mm. help each other. So I think something mm. like that would be really, really useful. Yeah. Uh, that's what I think. Mm. Conway, the, the concept that you're saying is mainly, you know, um, um, uh, sounds to me it's very user-based. That means we, we can do everything on our own as user, as buyers, not... not um, Agents, because I, I think what we are we are having what we have now is mainly um, the agent uh, agents driven uh, platforms, right? The main yep. users of these platforms are the, the agents. Yeah, actually, mm -hmm. when we look at the technology uh, that's uh, shaping the world, uh, the other industry, maybe um, fintech, for example, uh, is the most advanced uh, amongst all, and 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 it is in generation four point already, whereas PropTech is only at one point uh, maybe Fiona and Kong, why having known um property app and their design concept la, how do you think it can help the market? I suppose especially post pandemic. Mm. Okay. Mm. Um, for this portal, uh, actually, it's um, um, uh, it can help a lot. Uh, I mean, uh, for the uh, this uh, post uh post pandemic la. like uh, like for example. Make, make it most of the time, I mean, uh, for, oh, sorry, for the previous time, la, I mm. mean, agent need the physical, bring the buyer to visit, physical view the property, right? Yes. But, uh, but now it's uh, uh, actually uh, not necessary to bring physically. Mm. So use the mobile, mobile can do real time to view the property, to check the, all the, to, to inspect, inspect the, every corner of the, uh, I mean, the housing uh, inside. Mm. So mm. it's a it's a technology. I mean, uh, okay. So mm -hmm. th this one is uh, considered um for the buyer or the for the owner. They they also can do do that lah. Mm. Yeah, true. That means owner mm. has uh some sort of uh owners can do a lot of things with the apps as well. Lah. So it's not just the agents uh who yes. are who are using the app. Yes, mm. correct. Mm. Mm. What about uh you Kong Wei? What 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 are your thoughts about this? I think um mm -hmm. property app uh I think is heading the right direction in that sense. Uh you have more mortgage optimization plan, uh, then you have property related services like electrician, plumbers, handyman, air conditioning, floorings, curtains. And I think the part that I really like as an agent uh is that um you know, you can actually rate or review an agent by having, uh, you know, um, what's the what's the right term? Endorsement. Endorsement. Uh, yeah. Endorsement. Mm. Because I think that is very important. Uh, mm. that, you know, uh, it's not just that agents say how good they are. Yeah. Uh, they just always say how good uh, they what, are. What are they? <laughs> Sorry, right. I just have to say <laughs> that. What are the people people think behave. about agent? <laughs> honest opinion, because you know. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Yes, come I on. know you guys are a bit cheeky over there. So <laughs> think about that. One, uh, people think car salesmen, real estate agents are one of the worst people to trust. Right? <laughs> so okay. When the real people say that, it's fine. <laughs> I'm, I'm openly, I'm very open about it. <laughs> I'm very open about it mm. because what, what we do, the clients will appreciate and by having independent reviews, because that's what mm. clients search. They don't come to me because they like how I look. Uh, that's because they actually Google me. They actually look through the reviews and uh, all the uh, endorsements that I've reviewed, you know, on Google review and so forth, on Facebook review. And they, they, already, they already interviewed you before they decided to uh, uh, to contact you so when mm. they contact you you're more than halfway through that you know that you're uh, you're the one of the selected few that they're going to interview and the chances of uh, you being appointed as the agent uh, is a lot higher so the success rate is a lot higher so imagine that uh, in yeah. property app 
having those endorsements so the seller can mm-hmm. select the agent that they want to work with and agents that's good will continue to thrive and improve more the better they do the more endorsement they get mm. the more business they're going to get so I think this is a very good app uh, to allow that from happening mm. Yep. Uh, I think that definitely will will um increase the the trust uh, within the industry. Mm. So yeah, realtors, uh, agents will no longer <laughs> be the worst person to deal with. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you see, user but, agent, but, but like maybe the but maybe the car salesman, car salesman is a bit worse. <laughs> 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 All right, thank you, Fion and uh, Kong Wai for sharing with us today. So thank this- you. Mm. This message in the mm. bottle series is brought to you by Property App. Please like and share our podcast and download Property App, a property based all in one portal, including all home related peripheral services. Property App, where dreams come home. Let's go to our segment three Clubhouse Kiosk for some fun. Hello, hello. Welcome to segment three, Clubhouse Chaos, uh, where we usually answer uh, some questions and talk about something more casual. Yeah. Mm. So what we are doing today, since we are talking about the global view, uh, uh, let's take a look at the past and present landscapes and buildings uh, all over the world. Uh. Okay. Yes. Can we have the, uh, uh, the photos, the slides uh, shared? Do we have that? Thank you. All right, so uh, what we are doing today is guess that place, okay? You'll be guessing a place or uh, a building, you know, for, for our... So for our Zoom audience, uh, type in to the chat box, okay? And for our Facebook audience, please uh, comment in the... Uh, put in the Facebook comment box. Uh, shall we go to the first one? And our Fion, uh, Fion and, and Kong Wai, are you still here? <laughs> our yes. guest. Yes, yes. We, we need you to share uh, yeah, a little yes. bit uh, with us as well uh, on, on, on this. Okay, can we go to the first one? Uh, yeah, we let Fion and Kong Wai guess, uh, take a guess. Uh. Yeah. Okay, and the audience as well, uh, okay, type in, type in. What is this? Uh, this is uh, a building. <laughs> okay, you yeah, I, type I, in I the prepared. comment. Yes, we have actually prepared uh, some tips. Uh, but for this photo, we can't, we don't have any tips. Uh, because it's, it's too just easy. too easy to guess uh, if, <laughs> if we give you any easy. tips. So just guess. Uh, you know, some, this is actually, uh, uh, wow, so fast. Uh, okay, so our guess has, so fast. Uh, your, <laughs> okay, we have <laughs> our, so fast. some questions. <laughs> mm, yeah, Kong Wai very fast also. Uh. We have some, some uh, answers uh, in our Zoom chat box as well okay anyone from facebook from facebook uh, any audience from facebook yeah <laughs> if you're commenting we can see so this is um this photo is taken in 1865 huh okay okay shall we uh reveal the answer yes yes <laughs> you are right uh, everyone very fast uh. okay so it's actually the Taj mahal in uh that was that, that photo was in 1865. Uh, the river was, it's, it's at the river bank, it's the Yamuna River. Yeah, so I think everyone knows about uh, the Taj Mahal, right? Nicole, what do you know about Taj Mahal? Like, just one, one thing. <laughs> the marble. <laughs> oh, okay, the white marble. The white marble, yes. Yeah, Fion, do you know anything about um, Taj Mahal? Like, just yeah, one, yes, yeah. one word. Oh, yeah, can... One word for the Taj Mahal, something that you know. <laughs> uh, one word. <laughs> Let me see. India. <laughs> Where are you? <laughs> Kong Wai. Kong Wai. <laughs> well, I heard that. Uh. I heard. Uh, I think I vaguely remember it took, I think, almost 70 years yeah. to complete. Yeah. Something it along took a very long time. Yes, it took a very long time. Yes, so it's, it's actually a mausoleum. Oh, good romance. Someone uh, commented in the Facebook. Uh. Yes, it's, a, <laughs> it's, it's the, a symbol uh, of eternal love, right? Yeah. 
Okay, the king, mm. so, somebody commented uh, in the chat box as well. The king built this castle uh, for his beloved wife. It took 25 years. Yes, it took a very long time to build it. <laughs> oh, so this is amazing. India's... Uh, yes, yes, very amazing. Um, um, so it's actually mm. one of the seven wonders as well. Uh, mm. This is India's uh, most famous monument. Lah, and and it, it's best known for uh, the white marble mausoleum. And of course, it's a symbol of eternal love. Yes. Uh, and it's located in, uh, to the east of Agra, a city uh, uh, 170 kilometer away from uh, capital of India, uh, the <laughs> New Delhi. Yes. So uh, the, the emperor was called Shah Jahan. Uh, yes. <laughs> That's why. Okay. Let's uh, move to the next one, the second one. We have five places for you to guess. Uh. Fion, do you know where this is? <laughs> I think it's too uh, easy. Hong Kong lah. <laughs> <laughs> it's too easy for Is it the Si Ji San? It looks like the line. Si Ji San. This is called Si Ji San. Ah. Everybody mm. guessed correctly, uh, I think. Mm. <laughs> yes. Can we open up the top uh, uh, sign? Can you click on the den? Okay, the ferry is a dead giveaway. <laughs> Yes, this is actually uh, the Victoria Harbour. Victoria Harbour oh. in 1980. Yeah. Maybe mm, it's totally yeah. changed. <laughs> Fion, can you can tell see. us something? Oh, yeah, let's something see what's the picture now. This About is the, the now. Uh, Victoria Harbour. Eh? Wow, oh, this now is it's like a very famous. I mean, um, you can uh, walk along the street to see the sea. I mean, it's the oh. uh, harbour. Okay, and mm. there are a lot of uh, uh, around there, hang around. Uh, even have the very famous uh, shopping mall. It's a K11 museum. If you're in Hong Kong, you must be visit this place. K mm. K11 museum. K11. What, yeah, K what is it? Uh? K K it's a shopping mall. It's a, it's a very shopping famous. Mall. It's a very high class, high class ah. uh, shopping mall. First class. Right. Uh, Okay. Ah, nice. Yeah. Thank you. So this is the Victoria yeah, Harbour now, mm. so, so the even, yeah. Mm. yeah, you you can. I mean, uh, it's a, a place for you to take a uh, I mean, the this this uh, uh what's a boot uh to tr mm. uh, travel to Wadai, uh Central and the Hong Hum also can. Hong mm. Hum. Oh, okay. So the, the, hmm. ah, yeah, yeah, you continue, Nico. Yeah, the skyline of the, this Victoria Harbour is the most iconic places in Hong Kong. And, hmm. and also it's quite special because uh, this is uh, separated by this, uh, this uh, deep waters between Hong Kong Island uh, with the Kaolong, uh, Kaolong Peninsula. Kaolong. Mm. Yeah. Yes, yes. Kaolong Peninsula. <laughs> mm. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, mm. you all guessed that uh, very fast. Uh, okay, let's, uh, let's so look easy. at the third one. <laughs> okay, something harder. I don't know whether yes. it's hard. I don't know whether I don't it's know. hard. But for me, it's really hard. <laughs> yeah, to me, it's hard. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's see who can <laughs> guess oh, it. Right. So <laughs> okay, okay the, uh, Ivan, now, can you maybe just Ivan's try <laughs> private, a direct message us uh, without revealing to everyone? <laughs> so fast. Yep. Oh my God. Yeah, Shimon oh also my. got that right. Yes, yes, I Yoko. Am. You're right. Well, never <laughs> anyone, see here before. <laughs> yeah. Anyone from our Facebook, our Facebook audience? <laughs> You're right. Everyone. Okay. It's yes. Jasmine. Yes. Correct. You're right. <laughs> okay. So this is the Sheikh Zayed Road, uh, Dubai's main thoroughfare. 1990. Actually, 1990. It's not long mm. ago. Lah, huh? It's considered not long, not very long ago. If you take a look at the, years already, twenty thirty, uh, maybe thirty. Okay, it's almost the same age as me. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's take a look at the picture now. Uh, Dubai now. <laughs> That's why I say it's not very long ago because in just thirty years, the whole like... yeah, the wow. whole thing changed. The this is the mm. Dubai skyline. Uh, centered around uh, the same road. Uh, uh, this is taken in 2015. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
almost the same it's... age uh, as I am. <laughs> 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 yeah, so something about uh, Dubai, why is it so amazing? Uh? Uh, actually, in 1960, Dubai was only a regional trading center. Uh, there was only one hotel and 40,000 people. But to that, today, right, Dubai is a flourishing uh, economic hub la, with the world's uh, tallest skyscraper. Anyone knows uh, the, the world's tallest building? Anyone? The name. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's see. Uh, Ivan, you, you don't stop playing. Uh. You can continue on. Uh. I'll, I'll give you something uh, harder. <laughs> Anyone from Facebook? Yeah, the world's tallest building. Uh, building. Yeah, it's in Dubai. Yeah. Oh, wow. so, oh yo. <laughs> yes, it's oh, called uh, Burj Khalifa. It's called uh, Burj Khalifa. Yeah, so it, it's, uh, it has uh, the world's tallest building, the world's uh, almost the largest shopping mall in the world. Uh, most expensive hotels as well, and mm. close to 2.5 million people. That's why it's, yes, Ryoko, yeah, Burj Khalifa. That's why it's one of the most amazing uh, city that's been you know, uh, uh, built up in just a very short period of time, I would say. Mm. All right. All right, next. Mm. <laughs> Kong Wai, come in, Kong Wai. Oh. <laughs> That's Sydney. Yay! <laughs> this is so easy again. <laughs> no tips. Yeah, we don't have tips for this. No need tips. Uh. Yeah, this is this is uh, when the building. Yeah, Jasmine, you're right. This is when the building is still in uh, construction, right? Yeah. Hmm. Let's see. Yeah. Yes. Yes, real cool. This is a right. Sydney Opera House. Yeah, under construction in August 1966. Mm. Let's see. Uh, oh, so, so many uh, supports there. Back, back in 1966. <laughs> yeah. The, the construction technology is not the, that uh, developed yet, actually. So they are using all these old, you know, mm. old style te technology. Yeah, let's, mm. see. let's see the picture now. Yeah, let's see the now. Mm. So it's actually exactly the same. So Kong Wai is saying, this is, uh, oh yeah, he said he's from Kampong Perth. <laughs> <laughs> few thousands kilometers away. Uh, okay. Never mind, I still mm. definitely know this building. This is yes. the masterpiece uh, and a world famous icon of 20th century architecture. So... Uh, slightly in fall, uh, a little bit in fall. Uh. It took uh, actually 16 years. Uh, uh, mm, a bit lesser than Taj Mahal. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Taj Mahal took 35 years. This one mm. 16 years. Yeah, starting from 1958 uh, to start uh, for the podium and then completed the uh, uh, work shelves in 1967 and finally completed the glass skin and the interiors in 1973. And mm. This is truly a, a daring and a visionary experiment uh, of architecture design. And it has challenged the old time construction work uh, to complete this masterpiece. Mm, it's really amazing. Uh. Yeah. Um, uh, so the, the photo just now was in uh, which year? 1960 I... something, 1966. Uh. Yeah, yeah. All right. 1966. Mm -mm. Okay, I think uh, let's move to the last one. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't say one. it's... Yeah, the last one. Okay, I, I think it's actually quite tough as well. Uh. Okay, everyone, everybody, this is our last one. Uh, mm -hmm. Last picture, last place. Uh, yeah. <laughs> is it KL? <laughs> <laughs> Anyone? Okay, the, the one who said uh, he, he wants easy, to stop. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, he wants to stop playing. Uh. Come. Uh, okay, everyone in, in our Zoom... Zoom audience, uh, our Facebook audience as well. Where, where is this? Yeah, you are right, KL, but KL where? Yep. So this is, okay, uh, some tips. Uh. Actually, yeah, this is somewhere in KL. This is now a mall. Um, some guess KLCC. And uh, so a lot of people are guessing KLCC. Nope, it's not one of the skyscrapers. <laughs> uh, Wang KLCC, where else? So it's the the area is actually uh the the one uh in the red red colored uh, compound. 
Yeah, this area. Okay, so this was the location of Bukit Bintang Girls School, the old Bukit Bintang Girls School. Uh, but now it's mm. already, it's not Bukit Bintang Girls School. They have moved. Um, they have moved to uh, other, oh, oh, okay, yeah. But, uh, so you know, it's somewhere there already, right? Wow. Yeah, <laughs> I'm seeing one correct answer, eh, two correct answers. Yes. yes, three correct answers. Yes, it is Pavilion. Yep. You're right. Let's take a look at the picture now. Yes, Kim Leong. You're right. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so uh, something about Bukit Bintang. Uh, we all know uh, Bukit Bintang. It's, it's, the, it's, it's my favourite place. <laughs> favourite uh, shopping place, you know. It has everything, basically, right? Everything. Uh, it has, like, um, shopping mall, the best, the best mall, restaurant, um, nightclubs, and, and also residents. Actually, you know, we can have our... There, there are a lot of homestays or, or hotels uh, that we can uh, we can we can just stay there for a night. Uh, vacation. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Staycation. KL. Yeah, my friend actually went there uh, for a staycation because we can't mm. go uh, we, we can't travel uh, inter interstates. Mm. Yeah. All right, thank you. Hong so Kong this also is the same. Oh, Hong Kong also the same. You can't yeah. be traveling to other states, uh, other districts, <laughs> is it? Yeah. Uh, uh, no, I mean so now a lot of the people they like the staycation. Yeah. They just go oh, oh, because we can't travel overseas. Oversea. <laughs> overseas. Yeah, that's yeah, that's why it's uh, within the Hong Kong side. Mm. I, I I'm looking forward to visit Nicole so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can't wait to yeah. see that you yeah. <laughs> Thank right. you, Fion. Thank you, Kong Wai. Thank Thanks for being here Fionn. today. Yeah. So okay, uh, thank you. That's the uh, interesting, uh, that's interesting mm. part to see uh, all these developments and changes in uh, different countries. From last time till today, we can see the property industry in the world has changed drastically, not only bringing changes into our lifestyle, it also is a key factor in bringing up the economy of the country. And now the, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic has not only changed the way people live globally, but also the property landscape across the countries. So it is important for us to catch up to the uh, emerging trends for now and future. It's coming to the end. So we hope you have enjoyed our sharing session tonight. Yes, and stay tuned to our next episode. Huh? Uh, yeah. This message in a bottle series is brought to you by Property App. Please like, share, and download um Property App, a property based all in one portal, including all home related peripheral services. Property App, where dreams come home. I'm Vivian Chong, and I'm Nicole. Thanks for watching and listening to us. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you.